Hello my friends and welcome back to another Game Jam Time. My name is Paul, at the, uh, I'm the Teen Librarian at Gloucester County Library, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about Scratch. Now, you might be thinking, if you're familiar with Scratch, you might be thinking this is like the most basic, like everyone knows Scratch, or I, I kind of feel like everyone knows Scratch, but I'm kind of, I wanted to talk about it for those that might not know about it or might not know everything there is to know about it. Um, so those that don't know, it was developed by MIT. Uh, it was made to be a super easy introduction to computational thinking. Uh, not necessarily coding, but just kind of like understanding how these kind of blocks of code work with each other. Um, you take blocks of code and snap them together like Lego blocks. Now if you've seen that before in other programs, it's because this idea was really revolutionary at the time and a lot of other uh, game design applications ended up using it. We've actually seen it before with another um, Game Jam time we did uh, on Microsoft Make Code, which also used blocks of code to snap together, very much like you'll see here. Um, other ones that use it, I know Stencil uses it. Uh, there's a couple of other ones that use it. And just to give you an idea of how easy it is to use, we're going to start up a new uh, program, and we're going to move around something on the screen very quickly. So we'll go to Create here. Creating blocks. And every time you start a new program, you'll have a blank slate with no background, but you will have this little mascot, the Scratch mascot character. So we're going to move him around on the screen really quick with some simple code blocks here. Now I'm going to do, under Events, when the green flag is clicked, that means when, when this flag here is clicked, all the code underneath will run. Uh, you click this to start and this to stop up here. So we're going to look for... I want to see if something was pressed. And the right arrow is pressed. And you see we've got, so this is just if that key is pressed. This says if something then, and you can see this shape fits right with this, so you can actually just put that right in there. So if the right arrow is pressed, then, and we'll go to motion, we're going to change x by 10. Now x gets larger when you go this way, smaller when you go this way. So x by 10 will make him go to the right, and when the right arrow is pressed, we'll go to the right. So if we run this code with green arrow, every time we press right, So the first time I ran that, it didn't work. And I think I'm doing this a little bit, um, I think I can make this more compact. But if we add this forever to it, see the problem is when I click that, it's checking once. Was the right hour pressed? If it was, move 10. And after that, it doesn't check anymore. You have to put it into a forever loop. So now it will keep on checking to see if that right hour is pressed. So now we do this. So we can keep on moving along and these are going right off the screen. Get, get back here. Okay. <laughs> so then I, I think you can, I've done this before with like, I think less bits of code, but just to move things along, uh, we'll duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it. And I'm just gonna do it for each different arrow. Up arrow, left, and down. And so for left, we wanna change this by minus 10. Left, change by minus 10. And then for up and down, we don't want to do X at all. We want to do that, we want to do Y. So let's get rid of those, change X and motion. Uh, set X, where is it? Change Y by 10, I think 10 is up and minus 10 is down, but we'll double check that. Um, do we need this, put that in there, change that to minus 10. That might be backwards, but we'll see. Minus 10. Okay, so, let's see. We've got left, right, up and down. There we go, it's all working. Now you can see he's not moving, uh, he's not rotating at all, he's just staying in one position. But you can see just from these simple command blocks, we already have something moving around like that. You can get things up and running very quickly in Scratch, and it makes it really fun to just kind of 
uh, especially if you're just trying to brainstorm or get a concept for something going, and it makes it really simple to do. Uh, besides doing arrow keys, we can actually do one other thing. Let's get rid of these. Delete these. No, I want to delete the whole thing. Oh, get rid of all of this. Actually, I could probably just... Yeah, I can turn it to. Okay, so, now, when that is clicked, let's instead sense the mouse movements. So we'll do another forever loop. And then we'll have this going... Uh, kind of just actually go motion, I think motion towards the mouse. Go to mouse pointer. There we go. So go to mouse pointer. And that's going to happen forever. So when we click this, now he's just going to sit there following the mouse pointer. Um... And if you want to keep, like, you can imagine doing something like this, you could use it for different kind of games, but if you want to make something like, um, say you want to do a paddle for a palm clone, um, we've kind of, we're halfway there right there, but you don't want to have them go up and down, just left and right. So then, what we'll do is we'll just change the X. So... Do you set X to and under sensing? I think we've got a mouse option here for mouse mouse X. So set X to mouse X. So now if we put him down there, click the flag. And you can see, no matter where, up or down, I've got the mouse. Uh, it's only going to go on the x-axis. It's only going to move left and right. So right there, you can just have a quick uh, Pong paddle going. And that's really easy to get up and running. And there's just a couple blocks of code. Now, uh, Scratch has been around for a long time, so there's a ton of tutorials available. If you go to tutorials here, uh, I've actually done the Make a Pong game, but right there you can see how to do a Make a Pong game, uh, Make a Chase game. They've got lots of different things for... Uh, different games and different kind of storytelling and different animations because Scratch wasn't originally made as uh, just a game engine. It was actually made to do storytelling and remixing other people's uh, stories and, and projects. So there's a lot more you can do than just make games. Uh, you can set up scenes, you can have animations happen, you can have um, like uh, uh, text bubbles appear, uh, you can have interactivity with like a storytelling kind of thing. And then when that's done, uh, you can actually remix it, uh, take someone else's work, remix it and make it your own, and it'll actually still have your original uh, project listed and the link back to the original artist or author. So you can kind of remix someone else's work and it still gives them credit as well. Now just to give you an idea of like using the mouse pointer as a way to control something, I'm bringing up uh, a list of some of uh, my other programs I've made in the past, and there's one here, You Are a Vortex. Now, if we play this one, I think this one follows the mouse pointer, and then you use the left and right arrow keys to rotate your ship, and there's an alien that's constantly coming at you, and you can shoot it to slow it down, but you can't actually destroy it. And you get points for how long you can stay alive. Oh, and see, I got touched, and so my score is at 175 and it stops, and you can restart it there. Rotate myself around. Whoa. Ah. Oh. Usually better at it, but I'm kind of... Going kind of slow here. And he eventually keeps on speeding up, and there's other aliens that will come in that you can destroy that go really fast. He yeah, gets really fast here. You're basically just trying to stay as uh, far away as you can, for as long as you can. I don't know where the other aliens are. Oh, got touched. Okay. But see, that is just um, a real simple idea of how you use a mouse pointer to make a, a simple game. And so that is a real quick overview of Scratch. Um, if you've never used it before, um, I highly suggest giving it a try. It's so easy to just go in and make something happen. Uh, it's really fun to play around with. You can see what other people have made. You can remix them. Um, Check out the ideas page or the tutorials page. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with Scratch. It's really fun to play around with. So have you used Scratch before? And if you have, um, put a link down below to uh, your 
uh, library of products because if you've shared it, if you've published it, then anyone can look and, and remix and play your games. So I'd love to see what you've got, uh, made. Put it in the comments below. And uh, thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Happy gaming. Hello there everyone, if you've been following my Game Jam Time videos, you know I'm passionate about game design and everyone being able to make their own games um, and share them with everyone else. Uh, so I'd like to announce that our library will be hosting its first Game Jam this October. For any of you that don't know, a Game Jam is kind of like when people get together to make music uh, and just jam for a bit, but this time with games. Game jams can be done solo or in a group. The choice is up to you. While some Game Jams are judged and have winners, uh, they don't have to, and this one's not going to be judged. The point is simply to make a finished game that others can experience when you're done. All you have to do to participate is go to the address here, bit.ly slash gcls game jam. Now make sure that is case sensitive, the game jam part there. You'll have from 8 p.m. on Sunday, October 11th to 8 p.m. on Sunday, October 18th. One week, seven days to make your game. The only requirement besides making sure it's family friendly uh, is to have something to do with autumn. This is going to be our Autumn Game Jam. After your game is submitted, it'll be available to play on the Game Jam page, and the library will be playing them on a live stream as well. The link for the Game Jam has a list of resources for things like game engines, art and arts and tools, sound and music, everything you need to make a game. A lot of things that I've been talking about in past videos. I look forward to seeing and playing the different kinds of games you guys submit. Thanks very much and happy gaming.